Good afternoon and welcome to Webinar Wednesday. We're excited to have over 260 registered attendees for today's webinar, which is eligible for one credit from the ACI. Let's get started by giving one lucky attendee a Webinar Wednesday lunch bag for answering this trivia question. June is National Adopt a Cat Month. What is the name of the orange cat from the comic strip, animated cartoon and big screen movie? Answer now using the questions feature on your dashboard. While you're answering, I want to invite everyone to save the date for our full MD Expo, which will be taking place at the Hilton Baltimore Inner Harbor from October the 17th to the 19th. We look forward to you joining us for three days of learning, networking, and the latest advances in medical technology, products, and services. Registration is now open. So more details can be found at mdexposhow.com. Okay, and let's see who the winner of our webinar Wednesday lunch bag is. And it is uh, Anna Robel. Congratulations, Anna. Of course, the correct answer is Garfield. Webinar Wednesday would like to thank our sponsor, Nuvolo. Nuvolo is a modern cloud-based EAM platform that meets the highest standards for ease of use, performance, and online and offline mobility capability for managing clinical equipment for healthcare providers. Visit nuvolo.com for more information. Our presenter today is Ben Pearson, who is Vice President of Product Marketing at Nuvolo. Ben, you may begin whenever you're ready. Excellent, Linda, and thanks everyone for joining today. I appreciate this opportunity, especially in advance of the AMI conference coming up this weekend. Really excited to talk about, about this particular topic around parts management. Um, certainly, this is a, an item that I talk about as I'm, I'm presenting to hospitals, healthcare systems, healthcare service providers, is looking at better managing your parts when you think about that life cycle of medical equipment. Just a little bit about myself. Um, as Linda stated, uh, I run our product marketing and pre-sales here at Nivola. I've been here for uh, around, five, around four years, uh, but I've lived in healthcare pretty much my whole life. Uh, my mom's a nurse, my sister's a respiratory therapist, and uh, this weekend I'm fortunate marrying a clinical engineer. So uh, pretty excited about that. So you unfortunately won't see me at Amy, but our, our company will be out there. You'll see all the rest of the team. But again, I, like I said, living, breathing healthcare uh, pretty much my whole life and really excited about this topic, uh, parts management, a passion of mine in terms of better managing your parts. Uh, it seems that that's a, a challenge as we think about healthcare organizations, either stocking and inventorying parts on hand, but also that ordering process and that life cycle of that ordering. And we'll talk more about that as we go today. Now, one of the things I like to do about these sessions is I love to make these interactive. So um, as Linda mentioned, use the chat feature within uh, GoToWebinar, um, ask questions as we go. I will pause throughout the session today to hopefully address some of the, the topics that are on your minds as you think about your, how you're managing your parts inventory. So feel free, use the chat option, I'll pause, I'll try to field those as we go. And then uh, I'll, additionally at the end, I will have a Q&A, a formal Q&A as well. So our agenda today, I'm gonna talk a little bit about kind of the current state of a lot of the hospitals. And I've talked to over hundreds and hundreds of hospitals across the country and even internationally uh, around how they manage parts and some of the challenges that they are facing. And I'm curious if, if you're obviously facing some of the same things today. So what's that current state? What are some of the, the issues and, and opportunities to better manage parts? The second is around that opportunities and next steps. Like what are we seeing as sort of trends in the industry and where healthcare organizations are moving to uh, to drive efficiencies, to drive cost reductions as they look at their co their parts management. And uh, so we'll talk about that. I will get into a live demonstration. There's some things that we've done here at Novolo that's a, definitely a differentiator for us. We've, we've Integrations are the key there and tying in with part systems, tying in with ERP and financial systems. So I'll talk about that as we go through the demonstration. Also reporting and analytics. I, I wanna spend some time on that and actually share what we're doing around reporting on parts management, because it's not just about, you know, about the functionality of parts management, but also how are we uh, actually measuring the success of how we're, how we're actually operationalizing that, that parts management processes. And then we'll dive into Q&A at the very end. All right, so first talking a little bit about kind of the current state of a lot of the hospitals and healthcare systems I speak with, and we think about that first area of inventory control. You know, that's, and I think about that, it's what do I have how much do I have? Where is it, right? So if it's parts inventory, where are these parts at? Are they you know, in the hands of clinical engineers? 
Uh, are they storing some you know, stock themselves? Are, there in, are they actually in stock rooms? Do I have enough on hand today or am I needing to order additional for things that are upcoming? We think about forecasting PMs. We think about our upcoming PMs that, that are on your list. You know, how are you forecasting the needs for those parts as well? And, and we think about that second bullet. Are you getting into almost a model of on-demand, getting those parts just in time? And that's something you can look at moving to when we talk about more of that future state is, how do I prepare for my parts needs for my organization? How do I manage those parts? And then how do I trigger and make sure that I have the parts on hand as I need them uh, for those upcoming preventative maintenance or corrective maintenance work uh, that I'm doing across my hospitals? The, a lot of hospitals today are doing a manual procurement process. Most hospitals today, you would, what's happening is you have a clinical engineer working in their CMMS system, and what they're doing is, hey, I'm, I'm working on a work order, and I realize I need a part, all right? This, this particular infusion pump has a broken door. I need to order a new bezel. I'm going to go ahead and kick off, and I'm going to request the part order. And typically what happens is they'll open up another application or send an email or a phone call to their procurement department to go ahead and procure that part. And that's, uh, you know, in a lot of cases, very manual and a very cumbersome. There's no hook together between your CMMS system and your actual procurement system, whether it be Lawson being the most common in healthcare, but SAP, Oracle, Microsoft, Great Plains, et cetera. Um, but being able to tie those together so that clinical engineering really, we want one place for them to operate, right? I want them in their CMMS and I want them to be able to function in one system and have visibility in what's happening outside of that system. We'll talk more about that kind of that future state. When we think about that inefficient parts ordering process, that's really what we're talking about, right? Is I don't know what I have. I may not even know what I, you know, really how soon can I get it? And I have to pick up the phone and call procurement to get that part. And then you think about that entire receiving process, or maybe you have to do an RMA and return uh, that part, or maybe you're doing a core exchange on a part, right? There's all those complexities and it's very inefficient with a lot of uh, hospitals I speak with today in how you actually have visibility, but also how you operate in terms of that parts ordering process. And ultimately what this translates to is that time to resolution, right? Because if I have to wait or I have to check follow up with uh, procurement or follow up in a manual fashion, it's ultimately uh, uh, impacting your time to resolve or get medical devices back up and running for your hospitals. We also see, you know, device complexity is also an area, right? Now I need to also understand, especially those system assets like your imaging devices, right? You need to know uh, exactly what part do I need and how many parts are associated with this device and understanding that relationship of, of system parts and components to a larger system device. So complexity of devices, robotic surgery devices, imaging devices, right, are continuing to get more and more complex. But also we're looking at budget constraints. More and more hospitals are looking, I was just at a hospital in California a month ago, and they uh, were really looking at their part spend. Uh, because it's slowly creeped up over the past few years, and they're trying to find ways to reduce that, that spend in their parts. Well, they need to have that visibility reporting to be able to see where are we spending money on parts? What are the issues? Are these OEM parts? Are we going out to part source? Right? What are these different processes I'm doing? And how can we ultimately address our spend on our parts usage? Maybe we need to replace some of our medical devices because they're aged and the parts are failing. Right? So, so certainly looking at capital planning is another area. So these are some of the current state issues. I can pause for a second, see if there's any questions so far. Hopefully this is resonating or as it relates to some of the challenges you may be seeing. But when we think about that current state is how do we better drive process efficiencies within your, your per actual parts management, inventory and purchasing processes for your organization. Any questions so far, Linda? Uh, yeah, I've got a couple here actually that I sure. think they're connected. Um, how do you manage part warranties? Sure. Yep. So tracking parts warranties. Now, typically what's happening for a part that's under a warranty, you've got a serialized part. So you, know, you want to be able to track both consumable parts and serialized parts. What we do for the serialized parts is we'll actually track the warranty for it specifically. Now, consumable parts, you don't have that luxury of tracking warranties for consumable parts unless there's some form of a batch number that has an overall arching warranty for that batch of parts. Um, but typically that's a serialized part. And we have, on the part itself, the serialized part, we have a field that tracks warranty a warranty expiration date specifically, and then we can get notified when it does expire. Yeah, hopefully that answered that question. Okay, so, so how do you manage um, SW version of parts? Sure, so if your part has a software version, I assume that's where that, the SW meant. Um, so we, we can actually track not only the, the asset itself, software version, firmware version, 
operating system. I know cybersecurity is coming up really hot right now, especially with this latest vulnerability um, in Microsoft operating systems. Um, that um, yeah, so we do track that. We can track so software operating uh, operating system, operating version, firmware version, not only at an asset level but also at a component and a serialized part uh, is one of those. So we we, we track that as well uh, from a cybersecurity perspective. So I think that's where that question was going. Yeah. Okay, this kind of follows on. He's asking also, so do you track the documents from requisitions, POs, packing lists, and invoice? Yes, the entire life cycle. So, and I'll actually show that in the demonstration. Um, so when we go to order a part, we actually kick off what we call a purchase order request. That purchase order request, and I'll talk about the life cycle. I have a slide for that here upcoming. I actually track that entire life cycle, right? From, from actual PO request to actually passing that data over to your ERP or financial system to initiate the actual purchase order. When the purchase order is going goes through and we're, we're ready to now order the device, uh, order the part purchase, it then comes in and we actually arrives at our dock. We go through a receiving process. That receiving update, we note within our, our Novolo system actually passes that receiving data back to your financial system lost on SAP or Oracle and lets it know we've actually received this part in, allowing you to receive that part back to the work order or to your stock room or both. We allow you to, and I'll show that in the demo, so we can receive back to where you want it to be received to, either the work order or to the uh, a stock room. And then you, after that, you can actually trigger from that purchase order an invoice out to the business or out to uh, your customer. We have service providers in the healthcare space that are triggering invoices out. We also have healthcare systems that do invoicing out to the business unit, our line of business. So if it's surgery or if it's orthopedic, you can actually bill out for that work as well. A uh, long-winded answer, but I'll actually show some more of that as we go through the demonstration. Hopefully that, that covered that question. Cool. Okay. All right, well, Linda, I'm gonna continue. Um, yeah, I'm going to continue at this point. We'll, I think a lot of these are going to be coming up in the demo, but I'll, I'll pause after the next slide. We'll try to grab a few more of these. Great questions so far, you guys. Love it. All right. So we think about the gap, right? So what are the, some of the challenges? What are some of the gaps, right? The, the think about those process efficiencies, right? I'm paying, and if you guys read the latest Tech Nation magazine that was just last month, you saw that the, it's a hot topic is uh, attracting and retaining clinical engineers, right? It's an aging workforce. Um, that folks are starting to go into retirement. How do we attract and retain clinical engineers, but also make them as productive as possible? You know, technician productivity is one of the top topics that I, I hear at the hospitals I speak with, is how do, I, how do I help my clinical engineers be more productive with their time, right? How do I, and we're actually gonna do a session at Amy around R, RFID and RTLS as well, because there's some other areas when we think about productivity of engineers. But what I'm talking about today is really around productivity of parts ordering. Right? How do I make it so that, that that clinical engineer is spending more time focusing on the actual repair itself, less time, you know, contacting procurement, you know, following up with emails and phone calls uh, to ultimately get the parts parts ordered and parts received and ultimately utilized on that piece of equipment. So that's one area. And when we think about ultimately, I want to make better informed decisions based on the data. Right? When we actually get into the reporting and analytics session as part of this topic today, I'm going to show you how you have data now. To understand where are we spending our money on parts. That hospital I was talking about, that health system in California, they had a month by month report that we were able to show them. Here's exactly where you're spending money on parts. Here's you know what what hospitals are using, what what parts, what departments are using what parts, what modalities of devices. So you can actually see those trends and themes and understand what's causing it. Maybe it's even education to your clinical staff uh, on how to use a, a device because maybe uh, it's the uh, device is failing or getting damaged. Uh, because, you know, a, a caster wheel is rolling over a power cord, right? So um, understanding those problem trends, that data to be able to make better decisions around your parts management as well. In a lot of cases, the tools that a lot of hospitals are using, they're outdated. And what, what, what happens is those systems, you know, they're, they, they require multiple data entry points. We think about clinical engineering productivity. If a clinical engineer has to enter data in their CMMS and then enter that same data in their ERP, right? That's a challenge, right? Why, why shouldn't those systems be hooked together, right? And automated. Uh, swivel chairing, we talked about that turning between tools to be able to do their jobs. I saw one clinical engineering organization that was using three different applications just to do their clinical engineering jobs. Um, and I've seen others that have even more. Um, that's a lot of extra, extra time and energy. And then ultimately downstream, because of that multiple data entry, we have an issue of inaccurate or unavailable data, right? And data accuracy is really important. So if we can eliminate the human factor of that and integrate that data from your parts ordering systems and parts ordering processes, 
um, it certainly can help improve that data quality and ultimately uh, the results uh, that you get from that data. Ultimately, we need to see more automation. And I'm gonna show some automation today. I'm actually gonna give you a live demo of how we automate that parts ordering process. Um, because like I said, that really can streamline and simplify how you're getting parts inbound to your hospital and ultimately how you use those parts within your hospital. And then lastly, I'll talk about, I talked about kind of at length on the reporting analytics piece. We'll actually show more of that, but that's certainly one of the big pain points is how do I have visibility into where I'm spending money, how many parts are being used, where are those costs going, so I can make and better informed decisions about that. All right. Let's take a minute and just talk about this life cycle because I talked a little bit about the life cycle of a, of a purchase order because there's multiple phases in the life cycle of a medical device, right? All the way from requesting that device, requesting even the parts for that device. We go through an assessment phase, like do we really need this asset? Do we have enough assets? This is really that, that upfront determination of this is reporting analytics around it, right? And then across the entire planning phase, we have reporting analytics. Then we have budget for it. We have budget for the assets and the ongoing cost of those assets. Are you tracking the total cost of ownership or total cost of service of your assets to be able to understand not only what the acquisition cost of an asset is, and the part, but also the parts and labor that go into it over its lifetime. So understanding that budgeting process all the way then through acquisition. Obviously replacement is in the case where you need to you know, decommission a medical device and, uh, and replan, but then when you deploy a medical device, Right, you're going to want to educate your staff. You're going to want to go through that management phases now of, an, of a medical device. What are the compliance steps? We had a few questions come in around making sure the device is secure. If it's IP connected, do we have enough information about this device to know if it's you know cyber secure uh, for your your hospital? Is it put on the proper uh, you know VLAN for your your medical device network, for example? Do we know enough information to track its IP, its Mac, its software, its firmware? Um, the maintenance. Now we come into that maintenance phase, and this is really where you know, we want to be able to understand, okay, as we're maintaining this device, how are we actually tracking the ongoing cost of it, right? So if I did to go ahead and put labor against this, are we rolling that back to the asset? If we're buying parts against this asset, how are we tracking those against the maintenance going against it? And then we also want to make sure that the device is safe in the environment. So you see this entire life cycle of a device from request all the way through its planning phases, its management, and then through disposal, but this is the life cycle we typically see and we think about parts management. Parts management falls into both categories, right? You have to plan for your parts usage, but you also have to plan for the management of it and understanding not only how many are we using, what's the frequency, how often are they failing, um, but also how many do I need for upcoming forecasting for my organization. So I just wanna show that life cycle for a minute just so you understand kind of how this fits into the organization. Obviously, you guys are using a similar process for within your hospitals, not only for asset planning and, and acquisition, but also for parts management as well, hopefully. So let's talk about integration for a minute. So integration with business systems. You know, we think about procurement systems. And honestly, when we look, and I, as the hospitals I speak with, procurement really hasn't changed since the 1990s. It really has been about the exact same process across healthcare organizations since the 90s. And you know, they're still they're still running the Lawson's, the SAP's, the Oracle's, are, they're good systems. It's just what we haven't done is drove the automation into that procurement process. And what I mean by that is, you know, really it's looking at things like how do I drive visibility to what where that actual spend was going. A lot of hospitals aren't even tracking their part spend today unless they pull a report out of their financial or ERP system in a manual fashion. Um, when we think about materials management, most are not even tracking parts and materials at a work order level. A lot of hospitals don't even do that. They don't track that when they use a part, uh, they, may, they may know within their financial system, obviously, that the part is used, but most hospitals I speak with in their legacy CMMS systems aren't adding parts actually back to the work order level. And then overall, just poor inventory management, uh, meaning I don't know where my parts are um, what state are they in? Who has what parts? Do we have enough parts? It's a very lax uh, inventory management in a lot of hospitals I speak with. And I see both, both on-demand parts ordering, but also I see other hospitals that do keep their stock rooms, keep inventory in, in, in warehouses and leverage that across their hospitals. And then that communication process, right? I talk about that kind of that, that multiple applications are swiveling from your CMMS to your ERP. A lot of times there's a, a gap in communication between your clinical engineering department and your procurement department. What, what state are things at? And a lot of times it's that manual follow-up that is required because there's not an integration between these two systems that automatically give status updates 
right, information updates as things happen on either side, either in the CMMS or within your, your ERP system. I'm going to pause for a second at this slide and see if there's any additional questions. I'm sure, Linda, we've got quite a few. I'm going to field a couple more here and then we'll continue. I've got another slide on integrations. Okay, yeah, Ben, I've got a couple here. Sure. <clears throat> how, to ma how do you manage faulty parts that can be exchanged for a reduced price from the supplier? Sure, so we can do exchanges. So you're, you have 40 parts, you wanna exchange those for a reduced price. You're gonna do a return within Novolo for those 40 parts. Uh, so we have this returns process within our CMMS. Uh, that allows you to then send those 40 parts back to the vendor, depending on who you bought it from, the OEM or from a, a part source or a GE part system. Um, and then from there, you're going to get a return. Now, that return, that financial return is going to get passed over to uh, your ERP system. Uh, so the financial system, like Lawson or SAP or Oracle, are going to credit you that back as you get the new uh, return submitted. Um, so that will happen. Then you're also going to get your replacement parts uh, I, assume you're, I assume you're keeping those parts and just getting a credit for the cost difference is maybe where that was going. I'll have to, obviously we'd have to probably deep dive that a little bit further uh, to understand exactly what, what you're doing there. But um, we have the ability to pass that credit back to your financial system to reduce the 40 parts uh, cost variance between what, what, what the alternative cost was, if that, if that hopefully answered your question. Okay, so for routine parts, do you have mm -hmm. data to help with the par level management along with reorder points? Yes, we sure do. So we, as part of our, as part of our parts and stockroom management, we actually track um, current uh, current quantities on hand. Uh, we also, so the par levels we have on hand. We also have replenish thresholds. We also have the concept of being able to auto trigger replenishment. Uh, what I mean by that is I can auto trigger from my parts inventory either a purchase order. So I, if I need to replenish and do a purchase order back to the OEM or, or from whoever my parts vendor is, so I can auto trigger POs based on a replenishment threshold and also a replenishment amount. So I can also auto trigger a PO. I need 10 more of this part to hit that threshold, auto kick off a PO, it goes through your procurement system for approvals and all the, all the good stuff there. And then it actually issues that PO. Now, one other option is we also see a lot of hospitals that have a stockroom management model, somewhat of a hub and spoke. And what I mean by that is they run a centralized warehouse, and a lot of hospitals do. And from that centralized warehouse, rather than um, every satellite hospital, regional health system, maybe your surgery centers or other locations, they actually issue what's called a transfer order, and they transfer parts. So we can actually set up not only an automated purchase order when that threshold is hit, but for your, your satellite stock rooms, we can actually trigger a transfer, assuming you have enough stock in your central warehouse, the hub, and actually have it transferred out and issue the transfer of that part, you know, that quantity of parts from your central warehouse out to your satellite stock rooms as well. So we do have hospitals uh, that are actually leveraging that for their warehouse management and stock room management. Hopefully that was a long-winded answer. Hopefully that answered that question. Okay, and we have another question. As parts are ordered, will the lead time be determined to help with par levels and rate of use to know about order time so we do not have stock outs? Yes, absolutely. So you want to you want to be able to forecast when is this part expected to be delivered and when, and how many are going to be coming in at that time and be able to forecast that part inventory levels and par levels even in the future, right? So being able to see those those purchase orders for parts when are we expecting those parts to arrive? When they do arrive, updating our inventory levels. Um, so being able to not only forecast the parts when they're being staged and ordered, um, but also being able to see how many are currently on hand and then forecasted based on those purchase orders and upcoming orders on hand. I hopefully that answered that question. Uh, we'll probably have to talk about that one a little bit further. Okay, um, I've got one more. Would you want Great. another one? Yes, send, send okay. it over, sure. Um, how is ERP integration implemented? For example, with Lawson, mm -hmm. is it a live integration or manual import of, of an exported file? Who writes and administers the integration? Yeah, great question. So Lawson, so there's multiple. So with our integrations, we have typically three different models of integration. Lawson specifically, um, it is a near real time for the transactional types of data we need to pass. Now there's a lot of data we don't have to do live and transactional. Like for example, bringing in from your ERP uh, asset depreciation data. We typically do that daily, right? So that can be in batch and typically Lawson will drop a file, we'll pick it up and then we'll process it. 
uh, within our system to update current asset depreciation to be able to know your current asset state in terms of financial uh, depreciation. So that's one item. When we think about purchase orders, those are typically near real time. Uh, we actually pass that. We can pass that via web services. We can also do flat files and, and Lawson has a, a file format that it accepts uh, to pick those up. So we have a couple different methods with Lawson. So depending on the data point, the type of data that we're trying to transmit back and forth, it's not one or the other. We typically have a, uh, a, a series. So there's real-time data we need to pass. But then there's also batch data that we'll pass. Uh, it's like cost center data, for example. That's not real, need, doesn't need to be real-time. We typically do that in a, a nightly batch job as well, right? So um, hopefully that answered that question. But the answer is, yeah, it's in, the, the workload is typically on our shoulders from a Novolo perspective and integrating with Lawson or any of your ERPs. Uh, there is some that is done on the, on the Lawson team as well. Uh, just to, to handle that import file and I'll, or set up that web service interface. Um, but that hopefully that answered that question. Okay, great. Right, thanks. Great questions, you guys. Keep them coming. So let's dive into the next slide. I want to get to a demo here as well today. I know we've still got about uh, 20 minutes or so left. So um, some of the benefits of an integration, we just talked about some of that, right? But the goal here is I want to improve efficiency, right? That clinical engineering productivity I want to make that as efficient and effective as possible so that they're focused on you know, getting medical devices back up and running as fast and efficiently as possible, but also being able to drive consistent process and data and reporting across how are we doing related to our ERP or purchase order requests, right? And then how are we doing around our, 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 our uh, parts management as well? And ultimately driving that accuracy, transparency, and knowing where you're spending your money. How do I make better business decisions on that data? I also want to make sure that we have accurate information, right? If, we're, if, I, if I'm manually typing part numbers, descriptions, prices, uh, PO numbers across multiple systems, now all of a sudden there's that, that a risk of accurate data input, right? And then also being able to drive a visibility to improve your uptime of your medical devices, right? If I can't put a patient on that medical device, I'm not driving revenue for my hospital, right? So I need to make sure that these devices are back up and running quickly as possible. So being able to get visibility and to improve that uptime of your medical devices um, and we actually track, by the way, in Nivola, we do track uptime of your medical devices, and we can actually start measuring this. You start rolling out an integration to your ERP, and I start measuring and your parts management. We can actually see, does that improve your uptime of your medical devices? Is that actually, have you seen an improvement in the time it takes to complete a PM against that device as well? Reducing risk, right? So being able to reduce your risk, being able to actually see uh, the data you need to make better, better decisions. Like I said, data quality issues drive risk within your organization being able to understand the quality of the parts that you're, you're getting in, how often are you replacing those, right? How often are those failing? Being able to understand that in terms of risk of your medical devices as well. And a lot of others, just a few examples. All right, I'm gonna pause for one more any, one more question before we dive into product demonstration. I wanna show a few things today with, with the time in front of us. Any last questions, Linda, before we uh, get into a product demo? Yep, I've got one here. So is there a physical inventory audit process included in the Nuvolo process? Is there a specific inventory audit process? Um, so what we typically see as part of parts management is you actually do a, a part count. We actually will kick off as part of our scheduled work order creation or scheduled PMs. You actually schedule a part count uh, you know, ch check against your parts inventory. Uh, so I assume that's where that's going, where you do a physical count of your parts within your stock rooms. We can auto trigger that so you can validate your parts that you have that's stated you have within Novolo. It does it actually match what you physically have in hand and doing that physical count. So we can do that check and balance. We can auto trigger a, uh, a, a ticket uh, and a work order against that to be able to actually uh, initiate that process and validate do I have my parts on hand as it says I have it within my current inventory. So yeah, we can do that. Great. I have, got, right. I have got one more. Do you want to do that? Sure, yeah, yeah, I'll take it. Go okay. for it. Um, how do you track parts that are delivered as part of a service contract on a device, uh, like x-ray tubes, not stock, but want to track? Sure. Not stock, but want to track. Yeah, so what, what we do there is we actually track that as part of our contracts module. So let me just bring up our demo environment. I'll actually show you that really quick. Let me grab, let me grab our uh, contracts module. Um, so right here, I'm actually in, in a Novolo system here. Uh, let me actually bring you into, on the left-hand side, our contracts module. So I know we're going to jump around just a little bit here, so apologies on that. But within our contracts module, I have the ability to track all of your service contracts with your third-party service providers. Um, also, if you have parts contracts, 
right? And I can actually track what is covered under that contract. So if I have parts coverage, I can get down even into the consumable parts. So let me just show you this really quick. So here I have parts covered. I can even get down to the specific parts that are covered under this contract. So if only you know these particular types of parts are covered under contract, I can actually specify those parts. Um, so I can actually multi-select all the parts that are covered under that contract. So if there's only certain ones covered, I can include those in this contract. And that way you would know these parts when I'm actually adding it to a work order are covered by this particular contract, this particular vendor are all covered under this given contract. Hopefully that answered that question. I just wanna show it to you live since I, I actually hadn't planned to, on showing too much around contract management today, uh, but we do give you that ability to actually know what parts are covered under a given uh, contract. Hopefully that answered that question. Okay, all right. Let's, so let's dive into the demo today. Let me uh, just set back up here real quick and we'll, uh, we'll dive in here. So let's go in. What I wanna, where I like to start is actually kind of start from the life cycle of, uh, of an actual, so let's start with a life cycle of a work order here a little bit. So I'm actually coming in, I'm gonna come in as, as Kyle here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a clinical work order as a staff member within a hospital. So um, let's go ahead and create a work order. I'm gonna create a uh, medical device work order against the device and um, a couple different options we have for creating that work order. I can either report it based on a simple form based. Uh, so if I know the asset tag or if I know the location, this, this in this case, I'm gonna use a pump. This pump is in. I have the ability to actually just type in the tag and it does show me, by the way, if there's something already wrong with this device. So I can actually initiate uh, a new work order or I can actually see, hey, another staff member put an issue again against this particular device. It's already open, it's already available. So let's go ahead and create a work order here. Maybe it's something else. Maybe the bezel is broken uh, on this device. I think this is a pump, so we'll submit that. So we have this simple self-service model of being able to report work uh, when it comes in. So that's the goal there is really quickly I can actually submit a work order, right? We also have one other method, I'll just show it since we have a little bit of time, is I can also do things like equipment distribution. Maybe I need more pumps in my area for my surgery department. But I can also identify where I have a problem on a given floor plan as well. Uh, so we do, we did develop some functionality around floor plans. So you can actually bring up your floor plan. Excuse me, grab it when it's active. There we go. So with Novola, we actually can visualize where, where work is on a floor as well. Um, this is a functionality we developed uh, that gives you that, that visualization of where's work, right? Uh, a hospital over in, in California actually is going through trying to find all their medical devices right now that are vulnerable to this latest uh, cybersecurity risk. Well, being able to visualize on a floor where all my work is, be able to quickly and, and, and actively find these devices uh, is saving clinical engineering time, right? Not having to have a clinical engineer you know, scrub in, you know, sanitize their hands, put on, you know, safety equipment before they enter rooms is ultimately reducing that clinical engineering time, right? So now I can actually, as an end user, even report an issue on a map and where I have a problem. So in this case, I can, you know, so there's a pump down in this room, right? Needs cleaning, whatever it is. And they can actually pinpoint where on the floor they have a problem, there it is, and identify that visually on a floor. So I just wanna mention that functionality exists as well. Uh, so that's a work order creation. So now that work order came in, I'm gonna play the role of a clinical engineer now. So I'm a clinical engineer, I have this pump that just came in, I've got a, a ticket created for this, I know what room this was in, I actually have, uh, I can actually see that floor map of where that work order is. This pump, uh, infusion pump has a broken door. I'm actually uh, gonna go ahead and take a look at my parts inventory for this first. So let's look at my itemized cost. Let's take a look and see if I have a part for this. So I'm looking at my parts inventory right now. I'm gonna take a look at my parts. I actually need a filter. Let's see what we've got here. So let's see if we, how many stock rooms I have this in. So it looks like I don't even have this part. So I'm gonna to need to order this. We don't have this uh, in stock right now. I need to go ahead and trigger this. Now, just know that um, if the part wasn't inventory, I could pick that from my inventory and add this to my work order and it would reduce the quantities on hand. I'll actually show you that when we go into stock room management on how those quantities reduce and how we can trigger those automated purchase orders and automated transfer orders to replenish those stock as well. So in this case, I actually, I have a couple options to trigger. Uh, I, I do have an integration with PartSource. So we're gonna launch out to PartSource here to go ahead and order this. We do have other parts integrations to like GE parts. I'll show that in a second as well. So not only PartSource integration, but also uh, GE and other part systems as well. So let's go ahead and trigger it. We're gonna jump over to, to PartSource here for a minute. Let's take a look at PartSource. So here I'm in PartSource. And you'll notice that I'm auto logged in. And now I can actually search for the part that I want. Now I can search uh, part source by the 
the OEM that I'm working with, or I can search by the part number. So I know I need this part number, 36250. Uh, let's go ahead and search for that. Here's the part. I need this coupling assembly is what I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and let's order this part from part source. Now, I know I need five of these. So we'll go ahead and kick off five. I'm gonna, I can see the price. I'm going to go ahead and add this to my cart. So let's go ahead and do that. Once this, I'll look, I'll see here, okay, here's the part, here's the work order. You'll notice this work order number is coming over from Novolo. So this data is automatically passing back and forth. I don't have to key anything in. I don't have to key in the equipment serial number that came from this particular work order. This asset tag came from Novolo. All of this data is passing right from Novolo into part source or GE parts to be able to now bi-directionally update both sides. So part source knows, here's the work order I'm working on. Here's the asset I'm working on. Here's the equipment I'm working on. Looks great. So let's go ahead and include that as part of this purchase. And this is going to go ahead and bring me up to my next shopping cart. I'm ready to go ahead and check out. I could keep shopping, add additional parts, but I'm actually going to go ahead and check out for the sake of time here today. What this is going to do now is take me to the next screen that allows me to decide how is this going to get you know, paid. Uh, in this case, this was under a, a dollar threshold. This one's pretty cheap. It was 51.75 for this set of parts. Uh, we do, PartSource does have the ability to set up approval thresholds. So does Novolo on, uh, so, so say it's $1,000 or more, you require a, a approval from your, your director or, or your supervisor. Uh, in this case, we are good to go ahead and enter my PO number into here, or I can enter a credit card and we're ready to order it. We're ready to go ahead and make this purchase. So here's all the details. All this data actually came in again. We have this data. We know who's getting paid, who's getting billed, where's it getting shipped to, all that's in part source. So we'll go ahead and purchase this. So this is going to go ahead and create an invoice as well for me because it makes a nice form. That's what PartSource does. So there's a nice little invoice form here as well. So we can actually print that off so we have the order confirmation and the details there. What's happened now is this is actually passed this data over to Novolo. We now have, I open that same work order. Let me bring this up. So I got it open on the screen. There it is right here. Here's the part source uh, is now passed this data back. We now have our PO. So I'm in this work order we were just working on. Here's that clinical purchase order that just got created from part source. So let's go ahead and open that up. So here we're in, we see this purchase order request from part source. We'll see who we got assigned to, when did it get purchased? What was the PO date? So we'll see some of the key dates that came in. When do we expect it to get delivered? That also can come in. A question came up earlier around being able to forecast that expected delivery dates. So we can actually do that forecasting because we have that data in our system. And then we have our line items. Here's the part, here's that coupling assembly that I just ordered. Let's take a look at this. So we're, here it is, it's ordered. All this data came in from part source. I didn't have to type anything in as either the procurement person or as the clinical engineer, this is all automated. All this data came in automatically from the part source system right there. Now I have all the information I need. So I can actually see, here's this part. I can see it was ordered. Um, let's go ahead and actually, let's go ahead and it was delivered. Let's flag this as a delivered part now. Uh, it went ahead and it arrived at my dock. Now, I'm actually ready to receive this part. So within Novolo, I can actually receive this part back either into my stockroom or against this work order. So here's the work order right here we're working off of. So let's receive this. Now you'll notice I only have one right now that I went ahead and ordered in this case. I, I went ahead and picked one. Now you'll notice I can actually either apply this to the work order by checking this box here. And what this does is this automatically adds this part to this work order, including the cost. So you don't have to manually enter that as well. So I can either do that and enter a quantity of one, but if I also wanted to, maybe I want to replenish a stock room. I could actually pick the stock room to put this back to. If I had multiple parts, if I had multiple of quantity that I was receiving, I could actually add in multiple line items. So I could actually add additional line items for this. And I only have one. So in this case, I'm just going to adjust this so if it lets me. Yep, so it only lets me do one. So it does give you warnings if you try to receive more than what you've ordered. So we'll go ahead and, let's go ahead and return this back against this work order. So we'll go ahead and process that request. Just know I could also return that as well. Now you'll notice that as I just received this, I now have the ability to create an invoice. So that question came up earlier. Can I actually create an invoice against this PO? By the way, all of this data right now that I'm passing is also passing over to my Lawson or SAP or Oracle system with the part, with the cost, with all those details for the actual PO, right? The actual PO lives in your Lawson system but what we're able to do is have a system, a single system that your clinical engineers can operate out of. And now this is passing over to those systems. So you know, this part was received. Here's how many were received. Um, here's how much we paid. Here's who we paid, right? You have all that data. And then we can create an invoice. 
So we'll go ahead and create this invoice. This goes ahead and creates, you'll notice that we have our receiving line items right here. So we actually see the receiving line item, uh, receiving slips as well. So we actually can look at our receiving slips. Here's our invoice for this. We do have an invoice we can track. So I can pull up that invoice and take a peek at it as well. So we have that for our record. Here's the actual invoice. Um, let's take a look at a couple other areas here. I'm gonna pause for one second since that was a lot to go through really fast. Any questions so far? Um, we've got one that says, so it appears there is no data validation to prevent parts not associated to a device to be used, i.e. a pump would not need a part for an MRI. Yep, there, there is. So we can associate parts to a model. In this demo instance, I don't have that turned on right now. So let me just show you that really quick. So within our models of medical devices, that's a good question actually. Uh, so let me show you our models table really quick. I'm just open this on a new tab. Within our models table, I can bring up a model. So let me just bring up this defibrillator. And actually, let me grab this, uh, this model. Give me one second. What we are able to do is actually define on the part and at the model level, which parts are associated. And then we can we do qualify that when I actually select a part. So here I'm actually in the model itself. This is this particular defibrillator model. I can see related parts right here. So this is where related parts will get associated. So you actually would associate them there. On the actual part itself, let me go back to that part record. Um, I'll show you that as well. Let's dive into that really quick. So if we look at our parts inventory, let me grab one of these uh, coupling assemblies here. You'll notice that we can associate this to a, a model. So you'll see we have a part model name, we have an OEM part name, we have a part type as well. This does associate back to the clinical models that this would be associated with. So if we do have a particular model name that we'd wanna associate in here, this is where this model would be associated. So that is a, we do have that relationship mapping. So I know also here's the part, here's the stock rooms it lives in, Here's how many quantities I have on hand. Here's the models that it's associated to, even the devices that it's associated to that it's been used on, and any purchase orders that have been used for ordering this particular part. So we do track all of those relationships against the part. So hopefully that, sorry, was a long-winded answer, but hopefully that answered that question. Great, any other questions so far? Uh, no, we're good. Excellent, excellent. So let's go back to that Let's go back to that work order we were just looking at here. Let me grab that work order. Sorry, I know we jumped around a little bit there. Let me jump back into that work order. Okay, so let me jump into this work order really quick. You would have noticed that we went ahead and applied this part to this work order. So I'm now at a work order level here with this work order we opened earlier around that infusion pump repair. And you'll notice that within here now, you'll also see, um, you, again, here's your purchase order state. We can see where it was, it was received. So we do have all of those additional details tracked. Uh, so we now, this work order is ready to be completed. Um, I did wanted to mention as well, the GE parts as well. So I can also tie into GE parts. We also tie into one source documents as well. So you can actually look at your one source documents if you're integrated to that. So not only do we have part source integrations, we also have integrations with other key uh, systems you may be leveraging for either uh, maintenance manuals or other parts inventory systems like GE as well. So I wanted to mention that as well. Same capability exists here with GE, being able to select my parts from GE and apply those back to my work order as well. I'm gonna pause for a second. Any other questions on that so far? Otherwise, we'll, we're gonna jump next into reporting and analytics to wrap us up. You're good. Great. All right, so let's now talk a little bit about reporting analytics. Let me go back to my home screen and let's talk dive into that next. So. Within Nivola, we have over a thousand clinical engineering reports um, that you get out of the box. And what's great about this is it allows you to actually see, you know, you can actually dive into everything from, you know, your management dashboards, your clinical engineering dashboards, to parts management contracts, and the list goes on financial dashboards. What I'm gonna dive into right now is parts management specifically. And this concept of dashboards is really a roles-based view at data, right? So these are all reports. And I'm just gonna walk you through a few examples. And we have, like I said, many, many more, but these are just a few. So right here, I'm looking at my parts replacements. Maybe I wanna see who's doing what parts replacements, what locations are we doing a lot of parts replacements and how much are we spending location by location. So each of the colors down below obviously represents the sites to each of your hospitals. And then each of the technicians, we can see who's doing parts replacements. So I can actually see tech by tech. So I can sort and filter this however I want. Maybe I don't wanna see a sign too. Maybe I wanna see the departments. I wanna see what departments are actually driving 
these parts spends within each of these organizations. Now I can see it looks like laboratory uh, down in San Jose is driving quite a bit of spend. So is the surgical department in, in the Dallas the, uh, hospital. So now we can start slicing and dicing this data however you want. And this is all live data, by the way. I can drill into every one of these boxes and see what data is behind this. So here's a particular item that we spent money on down in Dallas. It was this particular gradient coil. Uh, so again, you can click right in, see the purchase order, see the tracking relative to that particular report. Again, live data. So let's, that's the first one. The next one is looking at my overall spend on parts. So being able to actually see where, how much are we spending month over month? What's our spend on parts? Is it going up? Is it going down? This is one of those reports I was talking about that, that California hospital system. They wanted to see this. They want to see where are we spending our money on parts? What, you know, how much are we spending month over month, quarter over quarter? And then dive into where are we spending it at? What hospitals are driving that spend? So here we can actually see in the right hand box here, this is our parts cost by facility. Now I can see what month by month, not only how much we totally spending, but also if we look at what hospitals are driving that spend. So I see Dallas looks like kind of the, the big spend right here. It looks like the New York hospital is spending you know, similar. St. Louis has been creeping up as well in, in, in spend. So if I'm a large hospital system or healthcare organization, I can look building by building, department by department, and start drilling into where that spend is coming from and what's the cause and what's what's going on, uh, right? Uh, parts cost by asset type. Maybe I want to see what's causing the largest spend in parts. In this case, beds are my biggest spend right here. So beds are driving the bulk of spend on parts. Why is that, right? So we might want to look into that. And again, this is live data. I can drill into it and see why. Maybe what model of bed is driving that. Maybe I want to filter that down to a particular model of bed, right? So again, live data. Um, I'm going to show a few more, and then I'm going to open it up for final Q&A here. Okay, so we got some parts by, by asset type and model. Where are we spending our money? Who's our vendor we're buying parts from? Maybe it's part source, maybe it's Care Fusion, maybe we're buying it right from an OEM, but being able to see where that spend is coming from, we also have the data to support that conversation as well and understanding who is our biggest vendor. Maybe I want to renegotiate a parts discount via contract with GE, right? Maybe I want to get a better deal with Medtronic. Right, being whoever it is, but being able to actually understand where that spend is by vendor and how many quantity and dollar amounts uh, to be able to have that conversation with that that particular OEM or, or 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 vendor. Assets that are driving the bulk of your spend. So here I can see this looks like infusion pumps are driving the bulk of spend here. Uh, so now we can see that you know maybe maybe there is something going on, but pretty common, right? You're doing a lot of work on pumps. They're obviously mobile. Uh, a lot of things fail on pumps. Largest you know volume of assets in a hospital is pumps typically. Uh, so uh, that's that's one of the areas, again, you can see even by um, asset type and model where we spend in the most amount of parts. We covered quite a bit of that. We can also see again, uh, you know, where are we spending the bulk of parts by model, uh, doing capital forecasting. You guys, uh, we have a lot of reports around parts management, uh, inventory management, uh, capital planning. I guess over a thousand clinical engineering reports in here. So um, I'm going to pause there and, and allow you guys to ask additional questions and see what I can answer. Hopefully this was helpful and gave you some more insights and ways you can manage your parts for your, your healthcare organization a little bit better um, and, and integrations that you could potentially look at for your own organizations. But Linda, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up now for Q&A and see what I can answer for the, the, the folks on the, call, on the call. Okay, okay, I've got a couple of questions here. Um, what ERP systems does Nuvolo integrate with? Sure. Uh, We've, we, we can integrate with all, but we've integrated with SAP, Oracle, and Lawson are the big three. Lawson being the most common ERP I see across all the hospitals I speak with, uh, but we've integrated with SAP and Oracle as well. Um, great planes every once in a while from Microsoft, but that's, I'd say that's very uncommon. But SAP, Oracle, and Lawson are the big three. Yeah. Okay, that's great. So does Nuvolo's PM scheduling have the ability to identify what parts and quantity of parts are required on PMs? Yes, that's a great question and I was going to show that. So thanks for calling that out. Absolutely. So let me bring up our scheduled maintenance module right here. So here I'm in a PM. Let me zoom this in so you folks on the call can see this easily. Um, so here I'm in a PM. This is for my, uh, looks like this is for an, Im an imaging MRIs. Uh, it's a yearly PM. You'll notice if I scroll down here, I can actually estimate the cost of this PM. I can estimate this by what are the parts required. So here I require two parts on this particular uh, model of device to be replaced during a PM. So I can add as many parts as I need to in my PM schedule. And where this comes into play, 
we is that parts forecasting, right? I want to know that these PMs are upcoming and that they need these particular parts for that. So now I can pre uh, order those parts in advance of my upcoming PMs, being able to forecast that parts. Because our PM scheduler allows you to, to identify what parts are required on the PM, but also what skills. We also track that as well. So if there's a particular, maybe it's a laser technician that has to be certified to work on this device, right? We can actually track not only parts, but skills required to be able to perform those PMs for those upcoming PMs. Hopefully that answered that question. And we have one more question. Is Does Nuvolo have the ability to track parts relationships on assets for traceability? Yes, we sure do. So let me bring up an asset really quick here and I'll show that really fast because uh, we absolutely do. Um, so, because uh, that comes up a lot, right? And you'll be able to do traceability of uh, serialized parts as they move, like like a, like a probe to an ultrasound, right? That's the one of the most common I see, uh, but there's a lot of others, but that's one of the common ones, right? Be able to know this probe's attached to this ultrasound. So let me bring up my inventory of devices. Uh, so let me grab clinical real quick here. Bear with me, great question. All right, so let me bring up a medical device here. Uh, so let's see, I've got a G signal. Let's grab one of these. You'll notice again, uptime, we're tracking that as well. So you have uptime, downtime, availability of your assets. I mentioned that earlier. Um, we also integrate with classification systems like ECRI and FDA. Uh, so you asked the question on relationships. So we track relationships right here. So I'll actually bring up what's called our relationship map. You can manually set it right here. So I can manually set my relationships and it automates those relationships when I replace serialized parts on this as well, by the way. Then I can actually visualize that relationship. So I can actually set up relationships with, you know, if this is an imaging device, sending sends to this server, has a PC attached to it. Uh, it's in this building. And then here's all my serialized parts right here. So here's all of my visually parts associated with this particular device. So it allows for that full end-to-end -end traceability uh, and supporting relationships as well. So if there's a server that support, this supports, if there's a PC that supports this medical device, you can track those relationships as well. Okay, that looks great. Thanks, Ben. It doesn't mm -hmm. look like we've got any more questions. So um, thank you, Ben, for a great and informative webinar. And obviously, thank you again to today's sponsor, Nuvolo. Um, just want to remind you, if you are attending Amy this weekend, to pop by the Nuvolo booth. And also, Technation will be there, and the team would love to meet you if you're going to be there. Um, just a reminder that we have now automated the post-webinar survey and certificate process, and hope that you will find it more convenient. The survey link will be included in the follow-up email, which will, you will receive in about an hour's time. Once you've completed the survey, you'll be able to download your certificate immediately. One lucky attendee will win an Amazon gift card for completing the survey. So if you have any questions, please contact us at webinar at mdpublishing.com. For more information about our upcoming webinars, please visit our website, webinarwednesday.live. And thank you once again for joining us today. And obviously, thank you, Ben, and good luck on Sunday at all your wedding. Um, hope to see you all again next week and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you all very much. Appreciate your time.